we're going to take a look at the concept of running a D5 water cooling pump at 24 volts as opposed to the standard 12 volts that comes off the power supply. Now this pump is rated to run between 8 and 24 volts so we can step up the voltage and still remain within the specifications of the manufacturer. To accomplish this we're going to utilize our 12 volt to 24 volt step up transformer if you'd like to see how we wired installed the transformer you can click the link in the top right of the video now we're going to use our multimeter and we're going to take a reading to ensure that the step up transformer is in fact doubling the voltage to 24 volts and as you can see on our multimeter we're getting a no load reading of 24.5 volts so everything looks good and it should be stepping up the voltage correctly on the way to the pump. So now the question is, does running a standard D5 water cooling pump at 24 volts increase pump performance? Does it increase pump pressure? Does it increase pump power? Does it increase pump RPM speed? Does it give the pump the ability to pump further against gravity? Does it improve system temperatures? So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Utilizing four criteria, pump pressure, pump RPM, final pump elevation, and system temperatures to help us compare performance of the pump at 12 volts versus 24 volts. Taking a look at pump pressure. While running the D5 at 12 volts, we observed a pressure gauge reading of 6 PSI. Now we utilized a needle style pressure gauge located at the outlet of the pump. Now these needle style gauges can be somewhat tricky to read because it depends on the angle from which you're observing the gauge. So what we did is we tried to set the camera up dead center to the face of the gauge and we left the camera in place for both tests for the 24 volt reading and the 12 volt reading. And at 12 volts we observed a 6 psi reading. Once we applied the 24 volts from the transformer, we observed 6 PSI reading. So we didn't notice any increase in pump power or pump pressure as it translates to the amount of pressure coming off the outlet of the pump. Next up, we'll take a look at the pump RPM speed. Utilizing the pump's built-in RPM speed wire, we connected that to our fan controller, and we utilized the fan controller's readout RPM display to observe the RPMs being sent from the pump. What we noticed is that the RPMs fluctuated slightly between three or four different RPM readings within approximately a couple of hundred RPMs. It was a distinguishable pattern of three or four different readouts. We took the highest visually observed RPM readout for each comparison. So at 12 volts, we visually observed a maximum RPM of 4,950. At 24 volts, we observed a maximum RPM of 4,950, so we didn't notice any difference. Regarding RPM speed, next we take a look at final pump elevation. Attaching a spare piece of tubing to the point where the fluid exits the test system, we monitored how far the pump could continue to elevate the fluid against gravity. While operating at 12 volts, we observed approximately an additional 6 feet against gravity the pump was able to achieve after exiting the system before the fluid returned to the reservoir. While operating at 24 volts, we observed approximately 6 feet of final pump elevation above and beyond the test system. So again, we didn't notice any increase in the pump's ability to push the fluid to a higher elevation after leaving the system. It remained consistent, it appeared to be identical, and we weren't expecting to see a difference it's because the pump pressure was the same, the pump RPM speed was the same, so it was pretty clear we weren't receiving an increase in pump power or pump speed by applying the higher voltages. And so we just wanted to throw this test in so we would have a physical observation based test as opposed to the other tests that were relying on gauges or readout displays and you know intricate circuitry 
and speed signals, we wanted to throw one in that we were just using our eyes. Just visual acuity. We didn't notice any difference in the pump ability to continue pushing the fluid upward against gravity after exiting the system. So again, we would say there was no observational difference between the 12 volt and the 24 volt operations of the pump. And finally, system temperatures. Does running the pump at 24 volts for a standard D5, which threw visual acuity and instrumentation reporting doesn't appear to be responding to increasing performance at 24 volts does it make the system run cooler does it increase cooling performance stay tuned after our summary you can view some of the temperatures that we were receiving during a couple of benchmarks and during some in-game rendering all right so our rundown of this test concludes and we would have to say that we didn't notice any improvement of running at 24 volts versus 12 volts on the d5 water cooling pump that we had installed here which was an aqua computer model we didn't gain any pump pressure at the pump outlet it read 6 psi for both tests at 12 volts and 24 volts we didn't achieve any extra height elevation so the pump wasn't able to pump to a higher elevation against gravity at 24 volts than it did at 12 volts. And we didn't notice any uh, improvement in cooling performance. It really wasn't a clear benefit to running a D5 at 24 volts, unfortunately. Whereas something like a PMP600 by Coolants, that does respond to the higher voltage and you will gain more pressure and the ability to pump to a higher elevation against gravity. And whether you would see an improvement in temperatures or not that's debatable and may depend on your system setup for something like the cool lance pmp 600 but getting back to the d5 we'll go ahead and let the clips roll on some of these semi-intensive gaming sessions keep an eye on the gpu temperatures keep an eye on the cpu temperatures and you can kind of see and compare and um, decide if you think there's a clear difference between 12 volts and 24 volts